This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Groups of four, student A, student B, student C, student D. Well, good thing I'm a teacher, so you're all the students. Tell me about this app. <laughs> all right, uh, let's walk through it together though. Investigate, read through the entire code. Each student focuses their attention on a single function. Reread the code for that function. Student A average, well, let me first just hit run. Does this do anything? Uh, it doesn't look like it. What about the time? Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to say I ran a, uh, my last one was what? 846. I know it's not the best, but you know, new mile time. One mile. Okay. How about, oh, I can only do, okay. 12 minutes and six minutes. Is it going to tell me I'm lying if I said two? No, it's not. Oh, wow. Okay. Average fastest total miles. Hmm, slowest, 12. Total miles seems, oh, oh, how many miles? Oh, gotcha. So the mile one, okay. All right, so average, what's average do? Okay, so I ran four different miles. My last run I ran in two minutes, that's great. Let's take a look at our average function. So function average, variable total is equal to zero. We then are using a for loop. Our, what we're going to use to count, what we're going to iterate over is this variable i, and we're going to set i equal to zero. i is going to go all the way up to the mile times dot length. So however many times are available to it, I put in four, so it will go all the way up to that. Um, well, i is less than that, so i will go up to three then, for instance, i plus plus. The total is equal to total plus mile times i. Oh, so they must be storing mile times. Yep, mile times is a list. And so they're storing each mile time in a list as I enter them. And then when they, then they run the average or the total function, this is the average, they need the total to calculate the average. So they go through the list and they say total is equal to total plus mile times zero. Old total, right? Total equals total. So total is equal to what the total used to equal plus mile time one. Zoop. And then they add them all up. Then what? Oh, they divide by how many items are in the list. And yeah, that would be the average. Cool slow for slow okay we have a variable temp which is zero we're also going to use i to go through the entire length of the mile times lists except this time if mile times i is greater than temp well temp we start out as zero so the first mile time is definitely greater than that temp is equal to mile time i okay and then we hit the bottom we loop oh okay so this will get slow it will get the slowest mile time because if the mile time is greater than temp well, then we want temp to be set to be equal to that n to that new slower time. And we're going to keep comparing everything to that time. Therefore, going through the list, comparing each number, seeing which one is the slowest, and holding on to the slowest until we hit the end. So then slowest is going to be equal to temp at the end, and slowest must be a global variable. Yep, see up here, and then we're going to use it. Cool. Fastest, I bet fastest does the same thing. Yes, it does. We loop through. Uh, oh. We loop through. The only difference here is that we're looking for, hey, is this, is temp faster than mile times? Because if temp is fastest, if temp is faster, oh yeah, if temp is faster than mile times, well, or if temp is larger than mile times, that's not the fastest time, right? The fastest time is the smallest number. That was throwing me off. The fastest time is the smallest number. So the smallest number, it finds that, and that will be our fastest time. Hopefully, I was saying up here, our largest numbers are slowest time. It's kind of weird to think about, but the largest number would be when you're the slowest, right? Because you ran real slow. It took you forever to finish. Got it. All right. Now, numbered list display. Numbered list display. This looks complicated. But I bet it's not. We have a variable that's equal to a blank string. We're looping i is equal to uh, all the way up to the length of the list. Temp is equal to temp plus mile plus i plus one. Oh, okay. And so i would start out at zero, but we don't want to print out zero. So we're saying zero plus one, so one. So temp, so mile one plus, right? Because temp starts as an empty string. So when I first start looping, i is at zero, temp is nothing. So then this line will be mile one plus i plus zero. So mile one plus colon plus whatever that first index is in our time list. For me, that was eight. New line character hits the bottom, goes back to the top. i is equal to one now because zero plus one, i plus plus is one. 
temp is what this used to be equal to so i just made it equal to line one keep that but also add mile plus i plus so that's mile two now all of this stuff another new line character at the end and then hit the bottom cool uh well we just said how it works cool create a function that adds together the total time of every element in the list console log the result okay we need a function for the total time all right well this is going to be real similar to the others so i'm going to just call this total time and then what i'll do is we want to loop through just like they've done here every item in the list huh they didn't give us a for loop maybe they want me to do it in text maybe they want me to do it in a another function i'm just going to do it in text so that's fine because we need to loop through every item again usually though you could make use of some of the other loops but they want it in a separate function so for var i is equal to zero i is less than mile times dot length i plus plus and this is a loop that is similar in C++, in Java, in uh, basically every, C Sharp, every programming language. All right, so uh, there we are. Now, what do we need? We need the total time. So I'm gonna need a variable up here, actually. And I'll switch back to regular view in a sec. Total, total. And I need to learn how to spell total, yikes. Okay, I'm gonna have this variable total be equal to zero. Total will be equal to whatever total used to be equal to because we're adding everything up as we go plus mile times dot oh mile times i okay because we're grabbing each index of our list and the reason this works is because we start at zero and remember length will give us the total amount of things so if we have three things in our list that's awesome length would say three but we only have indexes zero one and two well notice less than once i is equal to three the stuff in the list doesn't happen i equals three we're done with the loop and it's over so it, this will take us up into index two and then we're done because it has to be less than the length which is perfect because the list is the last index is one less than the length of the list all right and then we need a console like this so once that's all said and done i'm going to do console dot log uh total let me go back to blocks so you can see it maybe a bit better. And then I need to run this function as well, right? So they run theirs all the way at the top. I'm gonna just do this right next to mine so we can see it all. Oh, whoops. Oh, this will only run once. So I should do it on new mile. Ugh. Let me go to that. Every time I add a mile is when I should spit out the total probably. Yeah. So five, eight, uh, seven, nine, and you get the picture. Cool. This is getting complicated, but it's really important that we get this stuff. We're going to be able to build some really neat, really impressive. Oh, in the update screen function. All right, let's just go up here then, and let me just pull it down just to get everything. Oh, it's not going to want to eh, reset. Okay, there we are. There we go right here update screen nope whoa 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 you don't want to do that we don't want to run update screen inside of update screen we want total time yikes and perfect awesome complicated stuff important stuff let's uh keep going